All right, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School. Now we're working on a classic Chevy muscle car. Uh, we're actually in the middle of a process of showing you how to restore, or should I say make over, your classic muscle car. And when we paint this car, we're gonna take the doors off. We're gonna take the doors off. On the right hand side, the bushings on the hinges are bad. On the left side, they were in pretty good shape, but they still needed replaced. So what we're gonna do is take the door, we gotta take the doors off anyway to paint it. So I'm gonna show you how to remove these door hinge pins because these things are pretty much a nightmare. And if you don't know how to do it, you're gonna fuck yourself in the ass and wish that uh, you would have listened to my friend Pete in the first place. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. sticking out and messing up on us as we are working on it. Now another thing is, uh, if you pay attention here, you can see that I have the fenders off of this car. So the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this with the fenders off, but then on the other hand, if you are removing the door hinge pins to replace the bushings and the fender's still on it, you can still do it the way that I'm doing it, but instead of using a cutting wheel like I'm going to do to uh, perform this job, you can go ahead and use a, an airsaw, for instance, that has the real small, yeah, metal blade on it. Um, that would work really good if you're going to do it from the inside of the car if the fender's still on it. Because what we got to do is we got to cut that hinge pin in half. Let me show you why. If you look down inside there, right where I'm pointing, that is our hinge pin right there. That's the hinge pin that we're going to remove. Now pay close attention. This hinge pin was put on before the hinge was put on. You can see that if you knock that hinge pin up, it's not going to be able to go anywhere because of the door right here. Now you can go out this at two angles. You can take the hinges off, which I don't recommend because you'll have a hell of a time setting your door back in place once the hinges are removed. Or you can do it the way that I'm going to show you. Now another problem you have with these factory hinge pins is if you look right here, you can see where they are smashed. They are mushroomed down so they cannot be removed. Um, knocking these out with a hammer and a chisel is not going to cut it. The only thing you're going to do by doing that is fuck up your fucking hinges and then have to rely on aftermarket hinges to do the job and we definitely don't want that. So before we start taking the hinge pins out, there's a spring that's located in the bottom hinge. Now what that spring's for is to hold the door open when you open the door. Without that spring, the door would just flap in the wind and, and it wouldn't have any pressure to hold it open. So we got to remove the spring out of the door and that's what this is for right here. I'm gonna take my pry bar, I'm gonna open that door up and then I'm going to pop that spring out of place. And if you look right there with the door closed, there's the spring we're talking about. That is a super duty, heavy duty door spring that has got to be removed before we remove our hinge pins. So with the door open, we can see that the hinge spring is now open. What we'll do is we will take our pry bar and we will gently pry it out of there until it pops out. Just like that. And then you can see that the door swings all by itself and uh, doesn't have any tension on it holding it open. 
Now while we're looking at this with the door open, because we're going to be working with the door closed, I want you to pay close attention to that hinge pin right there of what the situation is. You can see that the head of the pin will not come out and then of course it won't go down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our cutting wheel once we close the door. Now if you don't have the fenders off you'll have to use an air saw that has a very small skinny blade and we're going to cut it as close as we can down to the hinge. It's very important that you do that because when you drop the hinge out, all right, you don't want it to hit. Kind of like our lower hinge pin here. If you look at the bottom of that head right there, you can see, I'm trying to get, there it is right there. You can see that when you knock that out of there, it's gonna hit the door. So it's very important to make sure that you cut it as close to the hinge as possible. So when you knock that out, it's not gonna hit that door as it goes around that curve of the door itself. And then here's our door spring right here. This is what it looks like. Be very careful when you're taking that out. Make sure that you wear the proper protective equipment like you see right there and stay out of the way when you pop that out because that there, if that thing hits you, it could hurt you. And then I always like to keep my parts in plastic baggies. That way we're not going to lose anything and we'll put them back with the parts so when we install our doors, our parts ain't getting lost. Now remember, as I show you this, it is possible to do it inside. That's how I usually do it because uh, we really don't go to the extreme of taking fenders off all the time. But since we have the fenders off, it's a lot easier to do on the outside, but that can be done on the inside. So everything that I show you, the only other difference besides doing it on the inside versus outside is that you got to use a different cutting type of tool to cut the hinge in half. Let's get going on this thing so I can show you how it's done and make it easy for you to take your door hinge pins out to replace those bushings and or refinish your car. I'm going to go ahead and close the door just like that. I want it latched, all right? And if you do this with the door open, you might want to get somebody to help you out hold the door or have a floor jack underneath the door as you're doing it. Once the hinge pins are removed, the door will be sloppy and fall out. I would hate to see you drop your door, break your glass, dent your door, and have to refinish your door just because you wanted to replace the hinge pins. So remember that. So we're going to go ahead and concentrate on this top hinge here, and then everything that I do on this hinge, you'd want to repeat it on the bottom hinge, and uh, then once your hinge pins are out, then you can go ahead and remove your door. Let's get down to it. Let's get that hinge out of there, and uh, hopefully everything will work out fine. Now I would like to say that on the left-hand door of this vehicle, the top hinge was actually put in in reverse, which means it went in through the bottom, all right? And that's how we're going to install that hinge pin on this side. We're going to go through the bottom up to the top, and then, of course, it was mushroomed down. So either way you look at it, you've got to cut the hinge to get the hinge pin out. You've got to cut the hinge pin, not the hinge. Let's get her done. Let's do it right. Watch, listen, and learn as my friend Pete shows you how to do it by your fucking self with no fucking professional advice telling you how to do it or charging you $10,000 to do it, or, or you have to go buy special fucking tools and have all this other fucking shit to do it with. Easy, simple, and fun. That's the magic word here. Now, if you use a cutting wheel, the situation you have is the cutting wheel has got to be partially used because a full, uh, what is that, two-inch cutting wheel, it's hard to fit in here without fucking everything else up. So uh, get yourself a cutting wheel when you do this, if you use the cutting wheel method like I'm doing, and make sure that half of it's already used to make sure that it fits inside here without hitting anything else. Another thing you want to be careful with, if, you're paint, if your car's already painted and you're just removing the doors to replace the hinges or whatever, uh, put some two inch tape right here so the tool, once it spins, if you look at it, you can see it spinning. This piece right here doesn't hit that and chip that paint off. Um, we're not really worried about it. We can always sand that down because this car is going to be refinished. So what we're, we're concentrating on is getting this hinge out of the car. And we got an antenna right here that's kind of in our fucking way. So we're going to try to get that out of the way. Make sure everything is out of the way before you start doing this. And then we're going to cut that hinge as close as we can, all right, to the top of the hinge itself. We're going to cut that pin off as close as we can to the top. And then what we're going to
gonna do, we're gonna take our pry bar, just like this, we're gonna stick it in between our hinge pin, and we're gonna gently pry that to get it started. Now, if it doesn't start, don't fuck with it, because you don't wanna bend your hinge pins. The top of the hinge where the head is, is gonna be the hardest part of the hinge to get out. So in that case, what you'll do is you'll take your pry bar or chisel and your hammer just like that and then you'll go ahead and put that on the top of the head just like this, all right, and then give it a good smacking and all we're doing here is loosening it up. We're not taking it out, we're just loosening it up and getting it to free up. Once you've loosened that up a little bit, you want to go ahead and take your pry bar again and just give it a nice easy pry to get it started just like that. Now if you look right here you can see where the head is hitting the door. Do you see what I'm saying there? Do you see the situation we have? But the good thing about this is that hinge pin is up far enough where once we get all the hinges out, when we jiggle this door loose, it will come out the rest of the way because if we take the pliers you see that it will not go any farther. Now, another thing that we can do is we can take our cutting wheel just like this and we can cut that head off just like this Take our vice grips, just like you're seeing me doing right here, just like that. I'm grabbing the pin. Once I get a hold of that, what I'll do is I'll take my hammer and I'll lightly tap up on the vice grips. And it should come out. And then, once you get it out, that's halfway there. You're almost done. All right, so to remove the bottom part of our hinge pin, what you'll do is take your vice grips one more time. You're gonna grab it just like this, making sure that the vice grips are tight. You see what I just did there? And then you can take your hammer, and then take your vice grips at the same time, and then hit vice grips to pull the pin out. Once you get it out far enough, then you'll be able to go ahead and grab the bottom of that hinge pin and knock it out of there. Just like that. So I'll go ahead and repeat my process on the bottom hinge. Once that pins out, the door will be able to be removed easily. We'll be able to replace our uh, bushings, and then we'll be able to put our aftermarket hinge pins back in. Now the aftermarket hinge pins that you buy, they're not going to have this little mushroom end on them. See, that's done at the factory so the hinge pin won't come out. What it is going to have, it's going to have a groove around it, and then you're going to put an E-clip in it to hold the pin in. But if you were paying attention, on the top of that hinge pin, it's got a knurl right here to lock it in place. So when you put your hinge pin back in, the knurl will hold it in place for you, but you still want to be able to put that clip back in to the door to hold your hinge pin in place. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you how to do stuff the easy way, doing it at home by yourself, and getting her done right. I got to get that other hinge off on the bottom so I can get these doors off and get them ready to paint. We'll be back. Take it easy. We'll see you later. And good luck with your fucking car.
for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.